Thank you for joining our podcast episode. Today, we'll be talking about micro-segmentation with Professor Avishai Wolf, AlgoSec co-founder and CTO. Welcome, Avishai. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Ami? I'm fantastic. Let's jump right into it. So, Avishai, what is my network segmentation and how can we compare that to um, micro-segmentation? Okay, so micro-segmentation and segmentation in general basically means uh, breaking up your network into multiple areas where uh, communication is segregated. So it's analogous to the old shipping mechanism in which uh, a ship was broken up into compartments uh, so that if water seeps into one compartment, there are uh, uh, doors and walls inside the ship's hull that prevent the water from leaking into other parts and sinking the whole ship. So it's the same idea, but transformed to a networking environment where you want to organize your network into segments. If they're small, then they would be micro segments uh, so that if you have something bad happening in one of them, then this activity does not propagate to other parts of the network. Mm -hmm. And um, how does that um, affect uh, ransomware? Well, ransomware is one of the uh, leading trends that we see in, in malware activity over the last couple of years. It's like uh, uh, the network criminals favorite pastime these days. Um, and what happens with ransomware is that it infects one computer on your environment and then it starts to propagate from that computer to other computers um, and there are various things that you can and should do to protect yourself against ransomware one of them one of the important ones is to segment your network so that if and when a ransomware event occurs in your environment and it's going to start from somewhere you want it to be con contained just in that network segment and not be able to propagate to other parts of the network and cause much larger damage. So segmentation in general, micro segmentation specifically, uh, is one of the great ways that organizations can use to proactively protect against the damages of ransomware. Now we've heard a lot about zero trust. How does that all relate to micro-segmentation? Well, okay, so zero trust is a, is a framework. Zero trust is a way of thinking about security. And fundamentally, when you're in a zero trust framework, you don't trust, right? So um, uh, you don't trust employees, you don't trust contractors, you don't trust computers on your network, you don't trust anything you don't have to trust. Um, and it's an, potentially an extension of the you know old mantra of of uh, uh, need to know and uh, provide access just the uh, just the amount of uh, credentials that you need to and so forth. Um, and zero trust can be enforced in multiple different ways and in multiple different levels of the technology. Um, one of the important mechanisms to enforce zero trust is at the network level where you don't want to allow connectivity from anywhere to anywhere inside your data center, like it used to be in the old days. Um, you want to allow only the communication that's truly necessary for business critical applications and nothing else. Uh, which is exactly what segmentation and micro-segmentation provides. It gives you a mechanism to enforce the policies that you need. So in a nutshell, I would say that micro-segmentation is the way to implement a zero-trust architecture at the network level. Okay, great. And how does the evolving technology affect micro-segmentation, for instance, uh, is it relevant in public cloud environments? Okay, so uh, uh, the technology definitely changes how micro-segmentation can be deployed. Uh, in you know, the old days, it was difficult to segment in there a network to very small uh, uh, sub areas and sub zones because you needed to deploy equipment, you needed to deploy 
uh, firewalls, you need to change routing. It was hard work, and so not many organizations did. Um, but now we have, since technology has evolved, and we now have um, uh, cloud technology, which is both um, well, public cloud technology, but also private cloud technology, uh, also known as software-defined networking. So when you have a software-defined network, whether it's in your own environment or in a public cloud like Amazon or Azure or, or Google, um, these technologies provide filtering capabilities that's baked into the fabric, which you can then use to segment your organization to the granularity that you see fit, and you don't have to worry about cabling and uh, and and wiring and uh, routing changes and so forth, because the, the the fabric handles all that. And and let me just re-emphasize that it all the cloud providers provide this capability, and also uh, on-premise uh, software-defined networking. Providers also provide this capability. You know, think uh, VMware or or Cisco ACI. They all have filtering capabilities that you can deploy and use to organize your network at the granularity that you require. Now, there's also something called agent-based segmentation and fabric-based segmentation. Can you explain the difference between the two? Sure. Sure. Okay. So um, what I said so far was was I, I was talking about segmenting the network using um, networking technology. So if you have uh, 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 capabilities of filtering baked into the fabric, then you can, using software-defined constructs, organize your network into small segments and um, write policy explaining what traffic is allowed to cross from one segment to another segment while all the traffic that is fully contained inside segment, one segment from you know, source to destination, all that is contained in a single segment, all that traffic is allowed to communicate freely. So that's like the, um, the way you do micro-segmentation and, and using networking technology lets you do that. There's an alternative that you can use to deploy micro-segmentation in many environments, um, and that is using you know, an agent-based technology. And here the idea is that the vendor of this um, segmentation technology places their own agent into every single computer, every single virtualized computer, every single server in the environment. And this agent is able to enforce connections into and out of that particular host. And the, the trick is that the, the uh, um, vendors in this category provide a central management facility so that you can write your policy once and the system deploys the policy to all the different agents, configuring each one of them to enforce the policy that's relevant to itself. Um, so that's a different technology to achieve the same goal except that it, now it's not done in the fabric, it's done inside each of the hosts. And there are multiple vendors that provide such capabilities, uh, um, you know, like you know, Cisco with their Cisco uh, Secure Workload, formerly Tetration, or you can, there's Illumio, there's Guardicore, there's, uh, there's others. So um, there are technologies that allow agent-based micro-segmentation, um, and, and the, the two approaches, the network-based and the agent-based uh, mechanisms are not mutually exclusive. You can use both. Uh, each one has its advantages and disadvantages, um, and you can use them in conjunction. You can use just pick one and not the other. Um, so there's, there's some degree of uh, customer choice here of how, how to deploy all these things. Now let's talk about containers on Kubernetes. How does that affect micro-segmentation? Well, that's another step in the evolution, right? So now, um, in addition to just having a software-defined network that includes instances, hosts, computers, now you can, inside your software-defined network or in the public cloud or in the cloud, you can you define a, a, a Kubernetes environment in which is like a network inside a network. Uh, and you can have containers running inside these uh, Kubernetes clusters. And then each one of them is like a miniature computer. 
And then you have connectivity inside the cluster and you have connectivity from inside the cluster to outside the cluster, uh, possibly from even outside the whole data center. So you can have connectivity from a container inside a Kubernetes cluster that's communicating with some other system in the same data center or some other system out in the internet or in a different organ different organization or where. And if you uh, uh, endorse that, if you use that kind of technology that offers all kinds of advantages, which I'm not going to go into right now, but if you do that, then you have another area where you can inject policy. Kubernetes has a, has built in uh, functionality that allows some filtering, and there are tools, some open source and some not, um, that allow filtering to be deployed at the border between one cluster and another inside the, the Kubernetes cluster. Um, or potentially you could deploy one of the agent-based solutions, but just place the agents in into each and every container within the Kubernetes cluster, and then you get micro-segmentation even inside each cluster, each pod. You can filter inside that as well if you want to uh, uh, go to that level of granularity uh, that technology allows. Great. Now, for customers who still have a traditional data center, can they also deploy a micro-segmentation strategy? Definitely. Architecture? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Customers that have a traditional data center absolutely can deploy a segmentation strategy. Uh, and it could be structured in multiple tiers. So you can clearly deploy internal firewalls to do what some call macro segmentation. So big chunks of zoning inject those firewalls where they where you can and where it makes sense both from a security point of view and from uh, networking and and also from a cost perspective and then inside each of these macro zones you can deploy a micro segmented architecture um, using for instance agent based uh, solutions you can certainly deploy agents on physical servers if you have them you know honestly today it's hardly Hardly anyone has a fully hardware-based data center. It's not cost-effective. Everybody's doing is using virtualized. Even inside the data center, you have your 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 VMwares and uh, and so on. So you can you can deploy a mix um, in your traditional data center uh, in using various networking technologies, be it traditional firewalls or filtering in the fabric of the virtualized part of the data center, or using agent-based technologies. So uh, it's definitely possible, and and I've talked to many customers who are doing exactly this. Uh, it's 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 a very good idea to do some kind of hybrid solution where you get the best of all these different technologies and apply them where you can. So let's talk about these customers. Uh, let's say a customer decides to pick agent-based or fabric-based segmentation. Um, what what are some of the next steps that uh, they have to take? at that point after making the decision? So you might think, and uh, some uh, some vendors might make you think that just purchasing the technology is the end of your problems and you have a micro-segment architecture and that's quite far from reality. Choosing the technology is step one and not always the most difficult or time-consuming step. What you need to do after you've decided whether you want to filter using technology A, B, or C, is you actually need to configure it. You need to write the policy. Nobody's going to write the policy instead of you. You have to write the policy. And the policy is going to have to say, I want to allow connectivity from here to there using these ports, process, ports and services and so forth, and nothing else. This final statement of and nothing else is really, really important because if you neglect to do that and you allow connectivity from places to play other places and you still retain the allow any default, you really haven't done anything. So you need to write this policy. And the more granular your technology is, the more work you're going to have. If somebody on your team has to write policy that allows connectivity from each and every server to each and every server in your organization, 
that's a lot of policies to write. That's a lot of rules. And you need to make sure you don't break anything. So you need to find out what you need to write in these policies. You need to discover what the intent is of every connection. And that's a lot of work. It requires separate tooling, which I think we should talk about uh, some other time. But discovering what you need to do, converting what you learned into enforceable policy, and then deploying it, and then switching from learning mode to enforcement mode. This is a project. And it requires planning, thinking, tooling, um, messaging to other members of the organization. It's it's a project. You need to treat it like a project. It's not just power the thing on and, and, and everything works. It's far from that. I want to thank Avishai for joining us, as well as our listeners out there. It was a pleasure going through the basics of micro-segmentation. Please stay tuned for our next podcast episode. Bye-bye.